So my first call would probably be to Munich RE. They're one of the okay. big players in the multifamily captive space. Okay. AIG does some interesting stuff. Voids of London is one of the more traditional, yeah. you know, players in this space. And for yeah. realistically the first three-ish years of a captive, Lloyd's is probably the best you're going to be able to find in yeah. multifamily. It's, yeah. it's a space where when the losses are big, they are ginormous. So if you're a reinsurer trying to underwrite the captive, you price that into the risk. Yeah. So that's really, it's the cost of reinsurance that determines if a captive is feasible or not. Okay. It's like the loss experience. Okay, so that, that like what type of um, you know is it specific insurance that you buy? So it would see in the, back in the back in the medical side of reinsurance, we had specific claims, you know, fifty thousand dollars specific deductible, and aggregate claims a million dollars. Uh, so how does it work on the on the captive side for a multifamily or property and casualty? It is similarly. It depends on how you've negotiated your treaty, but there is the the per claim driven trigger, as well as the cumulative losses over a season driven trigger. And it really comes down to how you want to keep the reinsurance semi-affordable for the captive, because that's really the, the killer expense on that okay. side of thing. And with the market hardening as it has been over the last three plus years, Crazy. I mean, I was just reading a Wall Street Journal article about how the cost of reinsurance is set to rise even more dramatically going yeah. into 2023. You know, with hurricane losses the way that they've been and some of the other catastrophic climate loss events. I mean, we had the, the Texas freeze occurrence a year and a half, two years ago, and just the abundance of hurricane, wildfire, and other hard to account for catastrophic losses that have occurred over the last decade. It's caused a significant hardening of that market and is really driving the increase in premium on the primary side as well. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's it was good for a while, you know. There were no like it's amazing they went up on everyone's premiums in Florida years ago, and then there was never another hurricane. It's like the time I owned a property in Michigan, and I got killed. First three years I owned that property, I got, I got killed on snow removal. I mean, every single year, and it just it I didn't make some some years I didn't make money on the property because I, it cost me so much. And so we got this great idea that we'd go out and buy a um, buy a, a a Ford Bronco on on uh, Craigslist along with a a plow and a sander, and uh, and oh god, I, I remember I my I flew I flew into Toledo to go to this property one time. My property manager says, "I'll leave the truck out in the, in the lot in the lot for you." And she said, "I said, where, where are you going to keep the keys? I'll just I said, I'll leave them on the mat." I said, "Well, I'm afraid somebody's going to steal it." She goes. Wait until you see this car you bought, Charlie. Nobody's going to steal this car. <laughs> and I, I got to the, I got there. I said, "Oh my gosh, did you like buy this from the at Toledo, Ohio Police Department evidence room? Because it smells like there was a dead body in here." And as soon as I bought that car, Calvin, three straight years, I never had any snow. <laughs> nothing, nothing. And it's just like you know, it's, you know, like I say, you're, you're um. You buy insurance and you never have another claim.